mode one.
you came along. Marinate on that. Marinate on that. My haters and critics, marinate on that. Talking about Alan Roger is a simple proposal. Yeah, I'm you going to say that because you're never going to propose a woman because you don't like women. Hate women. Deep down, you hate them. You want to hate fuck them. That's what you want to do. You want to hate fuck them. Just want to nut up inside their mouth. Nut up inside their pussy. If you're in the anal sex, you want to nut up in their ass. And God forbid, if you get one of those women pregnant, some of you all probably already had. And you're like, damn, I don't want to be that son or daughter. I didn't really want to get this woman pregnant. I don't want to claim that son or daughter. Just like your father didn't want to claim you. He didn't want to give no child support for a child that he never wanted in the first place. Yeah, if it's ain't about me, it's not about me. It's about you. You can call him Roger Curry all the names you want to because he found a quality woman that he wants to spend the rest of his life with and that he wants to have family with. You can give me all kinds of names, but it ain't going to erase your dysfunction. It ain't going to erase the painful months that your father never wanted you. Never, ever wanted you. And your mother resented you. Because you remind her of a womanizing, your womanizing father that never cared about her. Just wanted to pull her ass, slap her ass, and fuck this shit out of her. But then you came along. You were supposed to be some nut on her ass, or on her stomach, or on her tits. But you, the sperm that made you ended up fries in her head. And here you are, still resent women. Cause you, who, who do you have to, to measure a woman by? You ain't gonna measure by your mother cause you hate your mother. You can't stand your mother. You ain't gonna cry at your mother's funeral if she's still alive. You can't wait till she dead. And if she already dead, you didn't die, you didn't cry at her funeral. Because you represented her. This ain't about me. It's about you. It's about you. And the dysfunction you were born to. I wasn't born into dysfunction. My father genuinely cared for my mother. He loved her to death. She loved him to death. And they love me and my brother to death. I know you envy that. And in some cases, you resent the shit out of that. That I came from a happy home. I you don't like that. I know you don't. I cried when my mother died. I cried when my father died. And yes, I've been emotional over some women that I genuinely care for. I don't regret that shit. Because the truth is, why the fuck would you be in a serious relationship with a woman if you don't care for enough? To get emotional over her. I don't get emotional over fuck buddy. Just like your father didn't get emotional over her. Because she was just a fuck buddy. And you were just an accident. I wasn't no accident. I can call our names to some dating coach. I know some dating coach. Ain't spoke to their father in years if ever. Ain't spoke to their mother in years. Probably they were in their late teens, early 20s. They came from dysfunction. This brother here, he came from love. He didn't come from dysfunction. Like you motherfuckers did. Trying to hate on me. Call me names. Bring it. But it ain't going to erase the pain for reminders that were born from lust only. Not love. Lust only. Dysfunction. How you gonna get over that? How you gonna get over that, man? Huh? See, that's one of the things I get paid for, baby. I help guys get over that. How you gonna get over that? Cause you too busy trying to hate on me? Cause you envy me? And the life I came from, you envy me? You 
envy me because you know if you left your bitch in the room, you know what would happen. You know what would happen. You know I'm the baddest motherfucker you came across. But this ain't about me. It's about you. Your dysfunction, baby. Your dysfunction. It manifests itself as you wanting to pump and dump when you being anti-marriage, anti-love, anti-children. Because you were a mistake. Free 
time hating on me. You know what that tells me? That tells me that 99.999% chance your mother was a bitch, your father was a bitch, or both. And your mother was a bitch and a slut. Your father just wanted a nut off, and he hated the fact that you were born into this world. He might claim you. Or if your fights stay together, more than likely she abused your father. She talked down to him, he was a punk in front of your face. She verbally emasculated your father in your face. You are the product of dysfunction, but you are on YouTube offering your what you can be thoughtful opinions on dealing with women. Uh, you, you call yourself giving advice to me about your female intersexual dynamics. And you come from nothing but dysfunction. You fucked with the right one today. I had to hold back one copy. Mode one. Good evening. Yes, yes. As you know, the title, Mr. Alan Raj Curry and Dayton Coaches. Um, thanks for anybody that will go to this podcast in this episode. One thing I will say, um, I'm going to say some good things. I'm going to tell you why. Because what I've noticed in the 21st century now, more than ever, that a lot of men that are familiar with this um, this brother's work, um, I feel the way how a lot of these dudes in this space, either on YouTube, and usually most of YouTube and any other social media outlets, I have concluded that a man like Alan Raj Curry is really a necessity. And here's why. It's because there's a growing community of incels that I did not know until I heard about this last year. And normally when I think about it, I thought it was like some little phase that, you know, it's like a non-black thing on the average. Because I've heard of one of the few shooters from, what's the name? Al Roger, I mean, I'm not for Elliot Rogers to the guy that shoot up in Las Vegas of last year. And I forgot about the other gentleman or the other dude. But I've noticed when a man cannot really attract and, I guess, get the woman that he desires or able to get women at a certain number. This is what the behavior it will start to brew now as we see this new phenomenon that's been existing now for the last 10, almost 20 years now, since the, uh, I guess, since the innovation of the internet and with Google, because Google came out 1998, the internet started to come more full circle in 1993. Use the website, 1989. And mind you, we go back even further back in the 50s. This was a creation that was created by the government in it. But one thing is proven evident now that we have this internet. We have blogs, people that are able to interact through millions of people through cyberspace. And you can see people's thoughts and actions displayed through social media, YouTube, and other outlets. And what I've noticed is you get in the mind of a person by what their thoughts are, what they put digitally. And really, truly, you think about it, this shows mental illness amongst the men of our community, including the women. The women are no better, no good. But for the sake of conversation, we're going to deal with us as men today. The women I might deal with another time if I get to come, come around that. But really, truly, when I look at just a few of his works, of Alan Raj Curry at his age now. And matter of fact, since I'm talking about the man, um, let me see if I could pull up something. Oh, let me... uh, give me a second, guys. I'm trying to find something. 
No effect. I'll find it in a little bit. I should do this earlier. Um, where is that? I'm trying to find it. As I talk, um, this man has a prefer of books. And I think the only one I have in possession is the beta male revolution. I could be wrong. I gotta look for that from my my computer. But when I look at the works he's done so far, and I can't really go into all of it because I have to sit there and get hands on with some of the books or PDFs or the audio. But so far, from my perspective, um, his work right now in the 21st century is really needed, like I said earlier, because really we have a growing rise of incels in this community. A lot of men that's being very awkward. And it, it's, it's getting bad to the point where now you see some of these dudes say they don't want to marry no woman. Hell, they want to pump and dump. Which that's been going on for decades now. I don't know why that's this new thing. And even go as far as say, you know, we don't want a certain specific type of woman, a certain race of women. Okay. Um, for anybody in this chat room, if you could write down what books you have of this brother. Um, as I pull this up, let me see how I can share my screen. Um Oh, actually, let me blow this up. All right. Hold on, guys. I'm trying to do something. All right, good. I'm trying to find it. Oh, God. Okay. Okay, so I think... All right. Let me see. Let me see if this will show now. Let me see if y'all can see it. Tell me if y'all guys can see it. All right. It should pop up now. Oh, it didn't pop up. Shit. Okay. I have to work on this. All right. Uh, I don't know why it's not showing. Let me see. Stop sharing. I'm going to try it again. I'm going to do this one more time. Yeah, you see something, but it's, it's something supposed to pop up. That's not the one I was trying to show. I'm going to try it one more time. Okay, this should work now. Ah, found it. Now it should pop up. Okay. These are the books. Mode one, the possibility of sex. Ooh, say it again. And the one, and I think this is the one that every person, every man should read. I think this is the book I have, The Beta Male Revolution. And the reason why I would say this book should be the first one is because this explains the climate of men in the society, what we call America today. And why, why women are not cooperating, why they cannot be submissive. You know, you hear the, all these terminology and these complaints. It's because this man tells you in this particular book. Now, I can't pull up the book right now because y'all gotta read it for yourself. But I would say uh, any person that is trying to get real answers or get clarity, I think The Bama Revolution is the very first book. Besides all these other books that will teach you how to get women, how to fuck women, and potentially you know figure out the mind games to play, this is probably the first book you had to get. If you're a man, black man particularly, or not black man, what you wanna call yourself, because it's clear that the problems you have with women, especially the sisters, is pretty much explained in this first few pages on this Beta Male Revolution book. And 
it's sad to say that the, the typical man today, if he's making over 50 or more, either enough or it's enough or even, hell, some of them made like 100 grand a year now. It's not, it's not going to be enough to make the women you're dealing with cooperate with you, much as submit to you in this climate or in this so we call the West, we call America today. Why? Because like the brother said, R Raj Curry said, women are able to make their own money out. And if they're able to make their own money, what makes sense they want to submit to any man, especially a brother, that either got it or not? Now, I heard some things that talk about say, either we got money, women will not submit. You're bullshitting, Negro. You're bullshitting. If you make more than your girl and she don't work, that means she's under your will. She has to be under your will submission. Especially if she's a woman that doesn't really go our way to get an education and have to go work a job, the nine to five, which nowadays most women are forced to work nine to five now because the economic climate in America has changed in the last now 50 years. Or and cause we now a new decade now, so we could say it's now roughly now 60 years coming up. And since women can make their own money, what purpose they have for men today? Instead of something they need. Usually when people can make their money, they can control their desk. They could run the rules. They could be their own so-called little boss, as y'all know it. These girls, or women, you want to call them, don't have to really fuck with you in America. They could sit there. They probably make maybe a little less than you, maybe 10000 less, or maybe make more of you because they got, they got employment than most men, especially black men today. And it goes back that they can control and push the purse, purse screens of the community, especially the black community. I can't speak for all the communities, but let's say conversation, the community I'm talking right now, they do have the purse string. And knowing this now that a lot of men that sit there either the black man, especially if he's able to compete or not, is the biggest question now. Now, mind you, I hear a lot of these dudes that talk about that they do things in right, in life, good. They did everything right. They stay out of trouble. They go to school. They got a job. But it's more than that. You have to bring a little edge to you. You're going to have to bring some swag. Hell, you might have to bring some game. you verbal game or how you talk to women now if you're not interacting with women, which I have a lot problem with a lot of these dudes that can Claim about the women that they can't fuck today, you're gonna have to start doing that. It's not the so called what you want to call the pookie, the rare your problem, it's how you interact with these chicks now. Because doing what is everything you say you're doing is not enough now in the 21st century. It was not enough during the mid, I mean, the late 20th century, it will not be enough going for it in the 21st century. And I'm telling y'all this is because women are able to make money and eventually compete with you in the same market, the job market. For those that's watching this video, please, you know, or this podcast, like the video, please. Thank you. And share it too. So back to Alan Roger Curry. And matter of fact, let me Wikipedia him. So I'm on here now. Let me see if I can go to Wikipedia. Let's, let me see a little bit about him. Because he said he is on Wikipedia. So let's examine. Okay. And he, he pops up. All right, let me see if this could share. Um, I'm gonna share this now, and I'm I'm not gonna go too deep in the his bio on Wikipedia because y'all already know what it is. He probably tell enough of himself to the average um listener. So let me stop. 
Let me do this again. All right. This is Alan Roger Curry. Today is this man's birthday. Happy Earth Day to Alan Roger Curry. Born March the 3rd, 1963. So yeah, he is 57 years old today. He is pushing 60. And one of the things is um, his occupation, he's a dating coach. A motivated speaker. And a YouTube personality. It says it all here. And as you all know, he has four books, as I showed earlier. Which he deals with interpersonal relationships, verbal communication skills, which I said before is lacking amongst a lot of men now. If you're a millennial and a Gen Z, you lack interpersonal relationship and verbal communication right now as we speak. Why I say this? Because you live in a digital age. Right now, you live on the go. You live where you're on Facebook, IG, Snapchat. You don't talk to these chicks. You just send a message on a DM and hope that you're getting some. Hell, you go as far as showing your dick. And I'm not sure how far that gets now in 21st century. That, and you know what's funny? I talk to enough females I'm around about these dick pitch. And I ask them personally, with a lot of these boys that do this, does it get them closer to the pussy? On the average, they tell me no. So I told them this. <laughs> Anytime a boy or a so-called man pulls out his dick and takes pictures and sends to your DM, you sit there and you respond back, ask him, why you show me that, that shit? Now, I told one young, young teenager this, and she never understand the philosophy why I told that. I told, by telling this, it's going to make that boy or that so-called man over the age of 20 or greater start think on his actions why the hell he did that now if he doesn't respond i tell him block him now if he has a conversation to respond back then obviously what you have done you have made this individual this male think because it's going to come to a point a lot of you Negroes and you non-blacks go and start faking what the fuck you're doing. Because if your whole attention is just to get into the pussy, the pump and dump, then you need to find a different route. Matter of fact, I would advise most of you dudes that's going to listen to this, if you're really thinking of pumped up, there are two things you could do. One, you get sex dolls or sex box, which they have in the market now for two grand, three grand. Or... You sit there, pay for, you know, some chick on uh, my fans only. Because trust me, that's prostitution. Now, people don't think that the back page was destroyed and it exists. No, it still exists. They call it my fans only. You could pay somebody your DM to get some of your put, um, get your dick suck and get some fuck for a good price. They'll do it. Trust me. <laughs> they damn sure will do it if you got your money right. But if you're broke... You got no money? I can't have no answer for you, partner. I have no answer for you, sir. You're going to have to get your money up. But anyway, like I said, that's his professional I.O. And it shows here the man was born in Gary, Indiana, as we know. And let's go down. And one thing I did not know that Alan Roger Curry was during the 80s was he landed a role in local, regional, and national television commercials. Now, I'm not sure if he did like basic commercials or, you know, the ones that people usually spend their money on, but he did that during part of the 80s. And during 1989, he won the Miller Light Comedy Search Contest for up-and-coming comedian Hell in Chicago. So that means he also was a comedian too, which I didn't know that. For Robin Harris during 1989, Circle City Classic, Indianapolis, Indiana, he made brief appearance on the morning show A Mike and Juliet. 
an Oprah Winfrey show, which I know that, and the Phil Downing show, while it was still playing until it canceled back in 1994, from my, my memory. And the Steve Harvey show, or a Steve Harvey television talk show. So it looked like he was much of a comedian up to the 90s. He has a degree in um, MBA, um, business. He was also a screenwriter and filmmaker. Okay, NBC Page Program, NBC Studio, 20th Century Fox, Guest Relationship and the Special Event Department. All right. And here, the data and relationship offer, he developed a concept. One deal, mode one, four modes. Verbal communication in October 1999 and published his first book, pamphlet in 1989, entitled Mode One, Let Them Know What You Really Think. The 26-page pamphlet outlines general characteristics of each of the four modes. And that one of them is interpersonal communication, which I told you we lack as men in the 21st century. 20, well, actually, late 20th century going on to the 21st century. So, and here's the characteristics of mode one. Mode one behavior, characterized as highly self-assured, upfront, unapologetic, and straightforward, honest. Mode two behavior, characterized as pleasant, polite, cautious, and beat around the bush. Mode three behavior, characterized as phony, cowardly, deceptive, and flawed. Mode four behavior, characterized as Resentful, vindictive, misogynistic, and harsh, critical. And you know the the pamphlet eventually became a full fledged book in 1990, I believe. Yeah, it was ebook first, and it I think it became bigger. But usually, the book was in the process during 1990, which we now know is 30 years now. And also, he was on Blog Talk Radio. And I'm not sure if his podcast still exists on Blog Talk Radio. I doubt it because I once did Blog Talk Radio. And as you know, Blog Talk Radio, whether it's still important or not, it lost its importance because people are key. I think one weakness of Blog Talk Radio is I don't see much people can make money off Blog Talk Radio. I could be wrong. If you have the right advertisers, you, you, they'll probably pay, depending on your listeners. But really, truly, most of that use blog talk radio for the last five or six years. And some people might use it as long long as when it existed back in 2008 or actually 2006. Been using it probably longer than that. But like I said, a lot of people that was once on blog talk is now here on YouTube. And when, my reason why is because a lot of people can't keep paying monthly just to use the service. So she's not making money off it. But that's another story. So that's what he did. He was the king of verbal seduction, erotic conversationist. And then, you know, they have due to personalities back in 2017. And he was once part of the so called manosphere, or what they had called black manosphere. And right now they, they re-updated this because now it said Curry separated himself from the online community known as the Manosphere. And the reason why he separated himself is because, like I said, a growing number of incel behavior in this so-called space that's shown primat to Alan Roger Curry, even to the point where it's now labeled as a hate group and all that stuff through the internet, especially on Wikipedia. And all these other outlets that label a person that said they are part of a manosphere. Now, I heard some brother told me said that's just the master. This is a black master. It doesn't matter. Once you put and put the term manosphere at the end of it, red is white, black, yellow, green. You are labeled a hate group. So Al Raj Curry, because to protect his own brand, he separate himself from you. Negroes. 
And it's rightfully so because, I mean, when I look at the so-called black manosphere, I mean, it is what it is. It has, it said it made some strides and moves, but it's not really going anything beyond YouTube. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. And that's the honest truth. If you want to keep it 100. So, so he separated himself. And, and so it talks about the people that were homicide in cells from George Sodini, Elliot Rogers, and Alex Messinian. I don't know if that's how I pronounce the name right. Yeah. And right here, as you know, he is going to get married of next year, maybe end of this year, going next year, to his girlfriend, which he he said he met, she met him on YouTube as well. Imagine that. Her name is Jamia Sakaya uh, Walker. I don't know if I pronounced her name right. I saw pictures of his um fiance. She's she's good looking, you know. Sister, good looking, you know. So. So it's good. And that's pretty much it. I'm not going to go any further to this song. Let me stop this. So really truly when I when I look at and, and get my perspective of Alan Roger Curry, from my perspective, I said this before that he is a necessity. And the reason why I say he's a necessity because we do have a, a growing rise of self-hating men that not don't really don't know like black women or sisters, unfortunately. And I didn't want to believe it because usually when these dudes make talk their rhetoric about women, they are always posing and saying this their disdain hate for black women. And if you listen early on to this stream, he tells you why you hate this black woman. Or like most of these dudes that want to refer to her as a black bitch. You hate it because your mother was one. Your father didn't give a fuck about you and your mother was one of them. And it goes back through that hate. It draws disdain for hate for the woman, the woman that, that gave birth to you. And you can't be as a man of any age going around with that, that type of pathology, that hate for a good long time. It's going to eat inside. It's going to mess you up bad. It's going to mess you up very bad. It's going to mess you up so bad. It's going it, to, I, 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 I predict in the coming years, because I know one person left a comment on one of my last videos. How living out here in this region, this this environment we call America, that it got so bad that some of these dudes that's not even 30 years old, so they might just say the hell with women, not only the sisters, but any woman that they can't get, they will go even as far as buy a sex bot or what they call one of them, those new um sex dolls and said, right, let's go play with that for the rest of their life. Now, I know Alan Rodgers predicts something like this coming, but I see it coming in the coming years. And this brother had the same thing about what's to come. I know it's coming because I see the mentality of a growing group of men that does not want to better themselves, to get better self-improvement. You know, you waste time try to chase women instead of women try to get at you, you're doing disservice to yourself with this. And because of this now, you go out, waste your time and energy chasing women, and you're not getting enough in it. You're, you're not get, you're, it's, you're, just, you're just wasting time at this point, especially if your, your whole premise interacting with the opposite sex is just to have sex what we want to call the pump and dump. Now, I'm reading this comment here. And the brother says, how are you going to teach pump and dump for 20 years, then switch it up 
after a meet a woman online, get you're pregnant and then get mad when people call you a sex. You know, that's very interesting. And I the person that put this comment, um, I would like to see some actual proof of this because I'm not really a follower of Al Raj Curry, to be fair. I cannot agree with that because I just heard about this dude last year. It's just today I just decided to talk about this and focus on because the whole premise is the importance of dating coaches. My view on, on dating coaches. I always find that these dating coaches today is a hustle like anything else. But then again, you have to find the actual right coach to get out your money or the bang for your buck. So I cannot sit and demonize any person that said I'm a dating coach. I never invest no money in a dating coach. I don't see the importance for myself like that. But for every other brother that's seeking a mate or they want to learn how to interact with women to potentially get sex or what they call the possibility of sex, you might need a dating coach for that. And I'm not talking about the ones that you see on Patreon or YouTube or anything. And you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> that's trying to tell you you must lie to women to have sex. What you could do. You could do that. But the problem is, you got to be good with that shit. And the thing about it, if he is really doing that, and he has done that for over two decades, like I said, if you could put a comment of a video or some of him, I would appreciate it for reference and validation. And you know, like I said, um, he's here to try to better men so they have a better possibility of getting what they want, especially to get in the certain type of women they need or they want. Because if you're a, a sexually awkward male or a male that's shy and all this nonsense and you don't want to talk to women, I would recommend you go invest money on a dating coach, like everything else. If you invest money and time, especially if you have money, which, you know, that's not a big issue because, like I said, women are able to make their own money now. So you as a man, you going to have to do a little bit more. You got to do more. At least you're going to have to find other qualities of yourself just to snatch a woman, especially a sister. You're going to have to do more. And remember, as a man, or if you're a young boy is growing intimate, it's never easy. The road to manhood is never easy. I'm letting y'all know this right now. To be a man and is always a process. It's work. This environment will test you, which you have the ability to oppose. It's supposed to make the challenge you, test you, to see how well, you could not only adapt, but to dominate the environment. You have that ability. I'm telling you right now. But if you don't utilize what your, your, your strengths, your weakness is going to show all the time. And it shows all the time when you're trying to confront the opposite sex or women. I heard on another stream of a brother said this. He was in a relationship with a, with a woman for a couple years. And he dumped her, which was a good move. But the reason why he dumped her is because she was testing him. See how much a man he is when he's opposed to danger. Now, me as a man, when I heard that, I, I, I took a step back and think good. So, you know, that was kind of fucked up, but also not bad. And I'm going to tell you why. Because this environment you're in, or any warfare, there's always going to be some opposing opposition that's going to try, try you to take what you got. And it's going to test, are you willing to let me take it? Or you're going to fight for it. 
And mind you, there are women out here that will do that to the fellas. They're going to try and test you to see how much a capable man you are. How competent you are. Now, I didn't agree with how the way she go about because it was, how she did it was dangerous to the man. And it was right from Dumper because she created the snare. It was not naturally done. One thing I would not condone for any man to put no bullshit with no woman is when a woman try to create a snare just to test you. Where she can get yourself and herself and put in danger way, harm way. Where one y'all could go to jail or be, potentially get killed. Either or. I don't really condone no man deal with no woman that does that dumb shit. And you, you as a man, you should never deal with that either. Because, man, you're always preparing yourself for anything, hopefully. And to find that the woman that you've been fucking and sucking and that you trust for more than a couple years did that was a violation of your trust. And your livelihood and hers. And that's someone you don't want around you. So... So like I said before, um, dating coach is really needed. Um, I have no negative or anything opposition to a lot of people that a dating coach. Um, the only one, like I said, I could probably recommend right now. And I could be wrong. And if people want to correct me, you, you know, there's comment section. You could leave at the end of this podcast or the stream to tell me otherwise. Um, I think right now this man is right now the top right now. And the only reason why I say it because with his age, he has somewhat of an experience. But not only that, he has material. But he, he actually, if you think about it, what Al Raj Curry has created is almost like a, a course for a university. He has really create because the, the four books he has right now and his prefer can be used as a college course. Starting off from the mole one to the who say it again to the possibility of sex and the beta male revolution that came out now three years ago. Um a lot of males, if this is taught in a university, will pretty much bank on their money with this. Yeah, I think it's, it's necessary. So, I think um, a few things I'll say last on this. For those that do hate this brother, I can see why they hate him. Because this man, he will get in your, under your skin and he's going to tell you how it is. And like he said in the audio recording you heard, that this is the thing he does in his one-on-one -on -one coaching section. He gets in your head like a psychologist, like a therapist. Because he had to get in your head see what's wrong with you in your head. And knowing what's wrong with you in your head, he then proceeds to deconstruct all that program that's in your head, the things that your doubts, what you're thinking, what you feel you can or can't do. He removes all that. And the purpose why he does that, he does that so he could put something more in your head or try to get you to think and reprogram yourself to what you can't do to what you could do. And to draw out the fear you have against the opposite sex. That is his role. That is his job as a dating coach. And um, what do you call it? A dating coach and a... I'm trying to remember what, what else he called. And a um, interpersonal relationship and verbal communication. And he gave you interpersonal relationships and verbal communication skills. One of... Few things a man needs if he's able to bag a woman, rather make it your girlfriend, your wife, or a you know a typical woman that you want to have casual sex with. 
You need those things as a man in the 21st century. And in this climate we call, or this environment we call the West, we call America. You need these things. If you have any shot of bagging a woman, keeping a woman, and hell, even fucking a woman. So, so like I said before, you know, it's he's really needed. Um, and the thing I like to say about this thing about this simping. When I hear these same males, especially brothers, that talk about other black men that is in relationships, marry with women, I think, and I have to conclude that yes, you are a simp if you are a black man dating and procreating with a black woman. If you're dealing with a non-black woman, you're not considered simp because I don't see that same energy when you hear some dudes that's not in relationships with a black woman. I'm starting to notice this. I didn't want to believe it. I thought you just said, as long as you're a man that you handle the business, you got a girlfriend or a potential wifey and you have kids, that you're good. No, not in the so-called space that Al Raj Curry used to entertain with, the, what they call the man sphere, the black man sphere space. These dudes don't want that. And the sad thing about this, I know most dudes that, that have the money that travel, good. You could travel and know the, know the world if you can. But if you're not doing nothing constructive with your travels, but paying for low quality pussy outside America, uh, I got to say, you know, that's pretty much simple to me. Because it tells me you don't have those three qualities. Verbal communications, interpersonal, or all the other above. That's needed to, like I said before, get a woman, bag a woman, and fuck a woman. Now I kind of change up a little bit. Sure, a, a woman outside America will give you some pussy for a cost. And we all know the money in America runs much further here than, you know, <laughs> in here in America, which, like I said, women have the potential now to make their own money. So, like I said, those are my thoughts of dating coaching, Alan Raj Curry, you know. I hope this was helpful. I hope you learn from this. You know, um, please go back and re-listen to this. Um, he said some things that hurt some feelings to a lot of these dudes that had questions about him and his direction, what he's doing now. But he tells you personally to fuck off. And I'll tell you, get therapy as a man. You need therapy because a lot of y'all that born out of dysfunction, needs to get that check before you even deal with a woman to be person. Just like some of these sisters, if you born out of dysfunction, you need to get some fucking help too. And I'm not damn lying. All right? Because this man is in his late 50s now. Now, I don't condone the, um, you know, marrying some chick that's, I guess, 25 years or older. I don't condone that. But like I said, once you're a man at a certain age, you know, you're going to do what you're going to do. You know what I'm saying? I think with him, he's at the age now where he has to leave some legacy, which is not a bad idea. You know, most men should be doing that. The only thing I would say at my criticism that we should be doing that a little sooner. We should be doing it this at this age, you know. But like I said, every man moves differently. You know. But thank you for listening to tonight's broadcast. Um, please always comment, subscribe, and like this video. Leave comments, your thoughts and opinions, you know. And for those who said that this man's been teaching, pumping up for 20 years, if you could prove that to me, please leave that in the comment section under this video. But other than that, let me get us ready.